Okay. Welcome to Average Joe's. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Howdy y'all, Cole Care here with Average Joe's Tabletop. Coming back with another video finally. We had to take kind of a break for the holiday season and some people in the family got sick so we had to do some quarantining or some isolation. Um, but we're going to come back with a battle report just doing a fun open play game uh, that kind of doesn't really fall any detachment rules because of what we got going on. But it will be a battle between G2's Ultramarines and the Blood Angels. So we'll show you our goofy armies that don't quite really make sense, but it's because it's every model that G2 has, and he likes playing with every model that he has. Uh, so here is a battle report just for fun. I uh, hope you enjoy. Okay, here's just for our fun uh, open play battle. What G2 loves to do is a model for model war, so we'll go over our armies here in a minute. But here's our setup. A board designed by G2 himself. And here is the game we're going to play. This light's kind of washing it out. Let's turn that down a little so we can see the cards. So our twist is Rage. So everybody gets plus one to their tax characteristic. Uh, there's our deployment zones. We have that set up with our little dice. Like there's one there setting up where to stay in and then the prize uh, the only objective to win the game is to capture our little Xeno skull that we have here and then hold it if you're holding it at the end of round five you will be the victor so the objective is to grab and hold that and I guess kill as many people in the process to keep them away from it right from taking it from you uh, you can put it down whenever you want, and if the guy carrying it is killed, then it's automatically dropped. <clears throat> um, so when I say G2 loves doing models for models, we have all the stuff that G2 has painted over here. So it's not really a true detachment. Um, we're kind of breaking some rules. We don't have enough troop choices, and we have a lot of HQs. But it's just fun to play with everything we got. So he's got a 10-man intercessor squad, 5-man encourager squad, his 3-man aggressors, his Redemptor Dreadnought with the Gatlin Onslaught Gatlin Cannon. Uh, he's got a squad of his Outriders, a squad of the Vitrix Honor Guard, his Gilliman, and then he's got a Phobus Captain, Oop. Tigarius, a Primaris Lieutenant, a Phobus Chap or Phobus um, Librarian, and then he's got a Blade Guard Captain back there, Marnellis Calgar, and then a Chaplain. So I just grabbed the exact same units. So there's my Outriders, Dreadnought, I got Dante, Phobos Librarian, Phobos Captain, Chaplain, Lieutenant, Mephiston, and then the Captain with the Blade Guard set up. A squad of Sanguinary Guard, Incursors, Intercessors, my 30k Sanguinius model, with some homebrew 40k rules and then three man aggressor. Uh, we rolled off and G2 is going to be deploying first. So we'll get another video here or another segment to the video of how it all looks before we go. Okay, we got everything set up. So G2 decided to deploy over here. There's his outriders and he's got a huge clob of ultramarines ready to deal with trying to protect that objective. Um, the lucky thing is he, I picked him to be defend, I picked to be attacker, so he got to be defender, so he deployed burst, and that let him infiltrate right on top of that objective that if he gets to go first, he can grab and go. So I'm kind of set up to try to put a firebox on that objective if I can, if they can't take it, so I can move my guys in and come and grab it. Um, there's my intercessor little squad built up with chaplain, captain, lieutenant. Got my outriders here. Aggressors are there in case I can get the objective marker to have a place to run and hide at with some big guns. Um, let's see who's going to go first. Let's roll, G2. I got a three. 
If you beat the three, you get to go first. Let's see what he gets. A two. Ah, it's going to be hard. All right, here we go. Going to go into turn one. Okay, so we're at the end of battle round one. Um, what I did is I was able to jump Dante in and keep him screened with the Dreadnought, and he grabbed the Xeno Skull. Um, kept my incursors up there. They did some shooting. The Dreadnought did some shooting. We were only able to kill three of his incursors uh, by the end of it all. <clears throat> um, moved my intercessors back along with that chaplain, captain, and lieutenant to try to build a castle. Mephiston's fallen back to try to join this castle defense. Move my bikes over, just trying to create a, a barrier for G2's people. Uh, my aggressors didn't move, they stayed there. They're just waiting to be defenders. Uh, G2, that poker chip, he dropped an orbital bombardment right there. So on his next turn, uh, everyone else will be able to get out of it, but those aggressors are going to take some hits from that bomb. Uh, that's really it for my side of the battle round. On G2's side, uh, he started moving everybody up to see if they can't get that objective from the little Xeno Skull from Dante. Uh, he broke with his incursors. They did get sucked into hand-to-hand -hand combat with the um, Dreadnought. Uh, they backed off. Everyone tried to shoot the Dreadnought down a little bit. really didn't do much because all these weapons, none of them are heavy. Uh, so he decides to do most of his shooting into these incursors. He was able to kill two of them. Uh, he brought... Gilliman in and Gilliman completely obliterated that dreadnought. He brought the dreadnought down by one wound with shooting, and then Gilliman got the other 12 wounds using the Emperor's sword. Uh, he's moving all of his guys up. Don't know what his exact plan is. I think just to try to push through once I finally jump Dante back uh, to get him away from any kind of threat uh, that's coming his way here in a little while. And that ends battle round one for us. I currently hold the skull, and we'll see if I can keep it. Okay, that's the end of round two. Um, I had to move my guys because of the orbital bombardment G2 did, and he was able to score two wounds on one of my aggressors with that. Everybody else got just outside. Um, he's moving all his people to try to come and get Dante. He has the the skull he's castled up in there with all those guys um, he finished off my incursors up there and brought my captain down to one wound uh, he's bringing around his dreadnought and his incursors with Tigarius support to try to box me in from two directions and then the rest of his people he's just pushing up I didn't really do anything but run away and shoot some guys I took out some outriders he's down to one biker I think that's all that I really did any damage to so we're going into turn three. All right, so we're at the end of battle round three, going into four. Um, G2 was coming into here because Dante was there. I, I jumped him off and ran away. Um, Sanguinius and the Sanguinary Guard came down. Tigarius is supposed to be dead. Uh, they were able to kill the Dreadnought and Tigarius, or Tigarius, however you say his name. Um, I pushed up here with Mephiston and this Intercessor squad and my Outrider squad. I was able to kill Gilliman, um, tear down his Intercessor squad pretty good, and killed his Chaplain, but he killed my Outriders. I think he killed two Intercessors. Um, some wounds happened on the Lieutenant here. Uh, he got shot. Uh, the Aggressors are still trucking along. Your castle just fell. And G2 sent his big character and aggressor blob is trying to go get to Dante, who's running for his life. So that ends battle round three for us. Okay, so we're at the end of battle round four. Um, I still, Dante still holds the, the objective, the little Xeno skull here. Uh, he's jumped up, trying to get as far away from G2's guys as he can. Um... Moving these people to try to intercept over here where G2's heading. My aggressors are now pretty much out of the fight. They got no one to shoot anymore. Uh, we'll see if I can't catch them up to everybody else. <clears throat> well, this is the last round, so they're just stuck there. I got that little blob there. They finished off that captain. Uh, I finished painting our Judicars, so we 
deep strike dip in just to have another model on the board for fun. Uh, G2 is still moving his little character and aggressor blob um, through here to try to get to Dante. He's bringing his captain down um, over there, trying to get him into the fight, I guess. Uh, there's G2's Judicar that came in. And since G2 lost so much of his stuff, um, we have a divine intervention by the Emperor on the behalf of the Ultramarines. Uh, so G2 is wielding the Emperor right now. Um, he deep strike the Emperor and the Judicar in right there. Uh, the Emperor killed all the Sanguinary Guard with his psychic powers. We have some homebrew Emperor rules over here, and one of his is he can cast four spells of his choosing from any of the disciplines available to all of the Imperium. <clears throat> so he smited, blood lanced, psychic scourged, and fury of the ancients and killed all those sanguinary guard. So it's going into turn five, the last turn. I gotta try to hold this little relic. All I have left over here defending Dante is Sanguinius. So we're about to see a Primarch Emperor battle in this fifth and final round. All right, so we have ended the battle, and I barely hold on to victory. On uh, this last round, they the aggressors ran up, were able to put some shots on G2's aggressors. I shot them with the captain, lieutenant, and with the intercessor squad, and finished them off. Uh, they charged the lieutenant and killed him. Um, the intercessors charged Calgar and his Victrix guard guys soaked up all the hits, so Calgar didn't get any wounds at all in that fight, and he killed off five of those Marines that were left. Uh, he ran his librarian out here to do some psychic tests. Um, the Judicar got into a hand-to-hand -hand with that captain, brought him down to one wound, and then he ran off. Um, the librarian was able to smite Dante, bring him down to three wounds, uh, the Judicar made it into hand-to-hand. -hand. He made his charge, um, but he was ended up killed before he could do any damage to Dante. Um, in that round, that last round two, Sanguinius charged the Emperor, uh, was able to kill him, but the Emperor has the homebrew rules, has a special fight again, or fight and death, uh, so the Emperor killed Sanguinius right back in that fight. But it ends super close. Dante still has the skull. Let's put it on his little head. Dante held on to the skull. So that was the objective. And we pull out the victory, the Blood Angels do. Very close, but it was a lot of fun, especially with letting G2 deep strike the Emperor in. So here's everybody that's dead on the Blood Angel side and everyone dead on the ultramarine side that ends it thanks for watching our goofy little battle report and hopefully we can get you some more soon